Hi everyone, today I want to go over a really good tool that I like to use called an amp pound. And I recently did a video about a parasitic draw and a wake up issue, and this is actually a really good tool when you have a parasitic drain to help trace the drain down very easily. This is made by uh, Blue Point, and the number is EECT74. Um, I did buy this a while ago, I think it was about $50. What this really cool tool does is it measures voltage drop across the fuse terminals and it can then determine what the drain is in amperage across the fuse and it does that by the resistance of the fuse it knows the resistance by being able to determine which how much resistance this is in say a 15 amp regular fuse or a 50 amp maxi fuse or if you have the smaller fuses then it would be a mini fuse and you can dial that into the amp pound and then you measure across the terminals and it will tell you what the uh, actual drain is on that circuit. Now if I take my meter and I measure across two terminals like this I'm actually measuring voltage drop across the fuse element in here and that's not how you check power at a fuse that's actually checking voltage drop. When you're measuring a fuse this way, you should see zero volts. That's because you're measuring voltage drop once again. If you actually see 12 volts, that means that the fuse is open. So you have to be careful. Some people make that mistake. So if this fuse was open and you measured across the two terminals with it plugged in on the end, you would see 12 volts if this fuse was bad. If the fuse is good, you actually see zero volts when you check it across the two terminals right here and right here. Okay, to actually check power, you'd want to go from one end of the terminal to a good ground. I'll show you that real quick. All right, when you're looking for a ground, usually you can use like the, the bolt on the uh, door brake. That's usually a good spot. So checking for power, I would just pick a fuse I'm going to go to this 20 amp one here, and I'm going to go to the door brake right here. And then on my meter, I should see 12 volts. Alright, I'm going to do that real quick where you can see the actual meter, but I'm doing the same test. I'm going to one side of the fuse, and then to my door brake right there. I got 12.8, excellent. And I'm going to check the other side of that fuse as well, and I should see 12.8 and that means that I have good power and that fuse is good. If I did, saw zero here and I'm checking from one end to ground, I check the other side, you might have power on one side, but not on the other. And the reason for that would be that, again, the fuse was open, you'd have power coming from the feed side, trying to go through the fuse, but it's open, and you'd have no power going to the component that it needs to go to. All right, let me go over the, how to turn this on. I mean, it's pretty simple, you press it on, and then you can choose your fuse right there you go so that's a mini fuse and I can just go to a standard or I could go to a maxi fuse and then I can change my fuse rating by hitting the other button so I'm going to just use standard because this car uses mostly standard fuses and I'm going to just say a I don't know, it could be a 20 amp fuse that I'm going to check. So I would say 20 amp and then I'd press and hold and then it locks it in and now I would check voltage drop across the fuse. So by voltage drop, this is what I would be doing, going on the two ends of the fuse with it installed. Obviously there's no current flowing through this fuse, so my reading is zero. And it beeps, you know, as it's doing its reading. And that's basically what you would do with the fuse installed in the glove box. All right, so I just checked a 5 amp fuse that I just reinstalled. This is the one I had out, and it does go for the instrument cluster. It is the component that is actually waking up in this car. And when I plugged it in, it woke up the instrument cluster. And hence, there is voltage going through that fuse current, and I get a 0.11. So that means I have 110 milliamp draw on that fuse as soon as I plugged it in. So what's great about this tool is 
now that you know you have a drain and you've set up for parasitic draw test, you can actually just go across each one of these fuses one at a time and find your drain. Now there could be a stacked drain also. You could have 110 milliamps on one fuse and 300 milliamps on another fuse. And then you know, you'd end up with 400 or so milliamps on your actual drain. So it is good to check them all. It might be a little time consuming, but it is worth it to usually I change it to all fives and then I do all the fives and then I do all the seven and a halves and then I do all the tens and and twenties and so on. It just makes it a little bit easier that way you're not playing with the the tool over and over again. And of course once you know which fuse you can pull the fuse, verify that your drain dropped out and then you can look up your schematic and uh, you'll be able to determine uh, what's on there and then you can actually go to each specific component and you can unplug each component individually and that will help you solve um, the actual cause of the drain. Like in my case if I pull fuse 43 which is that 5 amp my 180 milliamp wake up goes away and that's actually a fuse that goes to the uh, instrument cluster. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please uh, put a comment in the comments box and I'll try to get back to you. And my channel only grows by people subscribing and uh, helping people out there. So if you have a problem with the car, let me know and I'll try to give you a hand to figure it out. If you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, just let me know. And, uh, you know, I will try to accommodate. I wish I had tons of cars to use as a... Uh, as making videos but unfortunately I am limited to cars that I'm working on and then I do have a E46 beater car that I had planned on fixing up with the car so beat that uh, I think I'm just going to use it to make some videos so I do have an E46 with an M52 TU so I can make videos using that if there's anything specific that you're looking for uh, just let me know Thanks for watching, likes and positive comments are appreciated and please remember to hit the subscribe button.